My name is Kristen Benigno Buxton. I'm an occupational therapist here at Baptist Orthopedic Hospital. I've been an occupational therapist for 19 years. Here at Baptist, we want you to have a successful recovery, and we hope you find this video helpful. In this video, you'll hear from myself, as well as a physical therapist and a speech therapist, going over information to get you on the road to recovery after your spine surgery. After your spine surgery, you'll want to follow all activity restrictions given to you by your doctor. If those differ from what's in this video, always defer to what your doctor says. Most spine patients will have three rules to follow. These are surgical precautions to protect your surgery. An acronym can be helpful for remembering them. And we like to say no B L T, no bending, lifting, or twisting. Let's review those. No bending of the spine forward or backward. No lifting more than five to 10 pounds, keeping in mind that a gallon of milk is eight pounds. Also keeping in mind that the lifting restriction also includes your body weight. So you wanna limit pushing and pulling. No twisting of the spine side to side. Sometimes it's helpful to remember to keep your shoulders stacked over your hips so that when you move, your body moves as one unit and you're not twisting. For neck surgery patients, the no BLT rules apply to you also. No bending of the neck would be not bringing the head up or down. No lifting more than five to 10 pounds, limit pushing and pulling and no twisting of the neck would be not bringing the neck side to side. Additionally, for neck surgery patients, you want to remember not to strain overhead. So just remember, no BLT, no bending, lifting, or twisting. Hello, I'm Kwong Nguyen. I'm a physical therapist for the Baptist Orthopedic Hospital. And today I'll be going over some things you wanna know about after your spine surgery. So the first time you come up from surgery, you'll be laying in the bed. And the first time getting up with physical or occupational therapy, the you know, first thing you wanna know about are your spinal precautions. So a couple of things your doctors want you to follow is you wanna avoid any bending, any lifting more than five to 10 pounds, and any twisting. And that comes into play with any movement and it begins immediately getting out of the bed. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your knees up when you, before you get out of the bed. And you're gonna make sure that your hips, or your knees, hips, and shoulders stay in alignment as you roll out of the bed. So as you reach this hand over for that side of the bed, you're gonna keep your spine in a neutral alignment, roll all the way over onto your side. And then once your legs come off the bed, you're gonna use a little bit of your elbow and hand here to sit yourself up. So legs will come off and you're gonna sit up. And that will be difficult for most of the patients who have lumbar surgery, sometimes uh, neck surgery as well, but your physical therapist will help you uh, here in the hospital. And if you need any help at home, your, uh, your physical therapist or occupational therapist will educate your family on how to help you at home as well. Now, your doctor, depending on every physician um, and procedure may require you to wear a brace, whether it's a back brace or a neck brace. Um, here in the hospital, it will either be provided you before surgery or if not, then a physical therapist will fit you here in the hospital. Um, I'm gonna grab the brace real quick. So if you have a, some type of a neck surgery, some doctors may require you to wear some type of a rigid collar, um, kind of like this Aspen collar here. And in order to fit it properly, most of you will already have it on um, before coming up from surgery. And if um, not, then a physical therapist or an occupational therapist will be sure that you fit it properly with it. So we're gonna take an on and off the neck brace. You wanna be sure that you have a nice snug fit that your chin rests um, snugly on top of this portion here. Now, if Mike had a longer or shorter neck, obviously that doesn't fit him because he can kind of say yes, right Mike? So you will need some support there in order to do so. Most braces will have some type of an adjustment to where you can adjust the length of it to where it's snug, so that prevents you from doing any bending. And if it was too loose here, all right, obviously you'll have a lot of gap there. And what you'll need to do is just tighten each strap and make sure 
you as the patient don't move your neck until you're nicely and secured. And that's how it should fit. Now, where you're taking off the brace, um, you know, OT will go over a little bit more when you're getting into the shower or dressing. Obviously, you'll need to take the brace off. And OT will kind of go over how a shower collar fits. But in order to take it off, just um, we like to use the clamshell method, just taking it off on one side will make it a lot easier to put it back on so you don't have to mess with it too much. Okay. Now, obviously, if you had a back surgery, you'll have a little bit of a different brace than this one. You'll be looking at some type of an LSO brace. Okay. Most of them work in the same way where they will add a little bit of compression to your core and your back to give you a little bit of stability and at least some kind of some stability to help your back out. So most of the compression that you get should be from this big straps here. Some people will just kind of lazily put it like this and then they will really pull on these straps. So you want most of your compression from the big straps here. And we like to call these the fine tuners to give you a little bit more compression as well. That feel okay, Mike? Yes. Okay. Very good. Now, when we're sitting at the edge of the bed here, if you don't mind me sitting here, Mike, you're gonna need to scoot forward. And one thing, that Mike's doing already is you're scooting forward one hip at a time. You want to make sure as you're scooting forward, you're going to move your shoulder and your hip simultaneously to prevent twisting as much as possible. But another thing you want to avoid, now Mike, if you can show them, some people will lift their whole body weight with their hands to scoot forward and back, and that's going to be lifting too much. Remember, your one of your precautions is lifting more than five to ten pounds, and most people will weigh more than five to ten pounds. So make sure you scoot one hip at a time. Okay. Whenever we get ready to walk. Some people may require an assisted device. Here in the hospital, we usually get up with a walker after surgery just because there is side effects of anesthesia, but sometimes people won't need it. Um, so obviously it's a, on a case-by-case -case basis, and if you need one, your physical and occupational therapist will definitely assess and recommend you have one, and if you don't need one, then you don't need one. So whenever we get ready to walk, we'll stand up. Make sure to use your legs and minimize weight through your hands because you want to limit lifting with your hands. And then when you're ready to walk, just think of the walker like a shopping cart and it should be for balance and you should walk nice and normal. My name is Emily Bolt and I'm a speech and language pathologist. Although rare, occasionally people experience change to their swallow function after anterior cervical fusion surgery. Most patients can return back to a regular diet within a day after surgery. But some few may need a little bit of extra work with speech therapy to strengthen the swallow. In order to catch any needs early, your nurse will conduct a dysphagia screen to be able to look at your swallow. Those who qualify will have a follow-up with a speech pathologist within 24 hours to fully assess the swallow function and determine any needs for speech therapy. Additionally, you can monitor for symptoms while you're eating and drinking, things like coughing or choking during your meal, a change or a gurgly sound in your voice while you're eating or drinking, or the feeling of food getting stuck in your throat. If you notice any of these symptoms, please notify your nurse so the speech pathologist can fully look at your swallow function. For all spine patients, you'll want to remember to maintain your spinal precautions when standing at the sink to brush your teeth or complete your grooming. Instead of bending at your back or your neck to reach the sink, you'll want to remember to hinge at the hips, keeping your spine straight. It can also be helpful, especially for neck surgery patients, to use two cups so that you can use one to bring the water to you, one to swish and spit, and that will avoid any additional strain or bending on your neck. If you're a neck surgery patient that's wearing a neck brace, it can also be helpful to put a washcloth under your chin to keep the brace dry. If you're using a walker at the sink, you want to remember your walker safety. Bring your walker all the way up to the countertop, step inside your walker, and then remember your walker safety rule of both hands 
or no hands. If you need to stabilize on something, use the countertop. It's not going to go anywhere. If you lean on the walker with one hand, it may tip, causing a fall. To complete your toileting task safely, you may need a toilet riser or a three-in-one commode chair over the toilet to raise up the seat height to make it easier to get up and down from. To safely get on and off the toilet, you're going to come in the bathroom with a walker and I want you to kind of parallel park next to the toilet to avoid the amount of backing up that you have to do. Then you'll turn keeping your body as one unit so you're not twisting. And you don't want to twist to see if the toilet is behind you. But you also don't want to end up too far to one side and have a fall. So you want to back up so you can feel the seat behind your legs. You'll reach back for the armrests or the grab bars, keeping your spine straight, hinging at the hips, lowering down mostly with your legs. When it's time to stand up, you can support with your arms, but remember, don't lift your body weight. You'll lean forward, hinging at the hips, pushing up mostly with your legs, and then put both hands on the walker. If you find that you're having trouble reaching to be able to complete your hygiene, being able to wipe yourself after using the restroom, there are devices that can help. A toilet tissue aid is a device that holds the toilet paper for you and extends your reach. You can insert the paper to the device. Now you're able to wipe front, accessing from the front, wiping front to back. And most devices have some mechanism that will allow you to drop the paper into the toilet when you're done. There are many types of toilet tissue aids. This one is more like a version of tongs, and these can be very popular also. Toilet tissue aids are available for purchase at many medical pharmacies, supply stores, and online sources, typically for $20 to $30. When completing your upper body dressing, you want to keep some techniques in mind in order to do it while maintaining your spinal precautions. First, choose loose clothing. It will be much easier to put on without bending or twisting. And for neck patients, you want to pay special attention to the neck opening. A generously sized neck opening and generously sized arm openings will help you put it on easier without bending or twisting. A V-neck shirt or a shirt that opens down the front can sometimes be even easier. For a pullover shirt, typically the easiest way to put it on, especially for neck patients, is to thread it over your head first. Then while keeping your head and neck straight, simply thread in your arms. And to remove it, just reverse the process. Bring your arms out, then slip it over your head, keeping your neck straight. For an open front shirt or jacket, you'll most likely be able to thread in one arm and bring it around the back and reach the other side. If you can't reach it without twisting, or if you feel like it pulls too much on your surgery site, you can use a reacher or a dressing stick to help you. For that technique, you would still thread one arm. You would put the hook of the dressing stick or the grabber into the shoulder seam of the other side and then bring it around so that you can put in your other arm. When completing your lower body dressing, there are some tips to keep in mind to maintain your spinal precautions. First, looser fitting elastic waist clothing will be easier for you to put on and safer. Second, remember to thread your pants over your feet when you're sitting down. 
don't try to do that standing as you could get tangled up and potentially have a fall. Most spine patients will be able to do the leg to lap method while keeping their spine straight in order to thread pants, shorts, etc., over their feet. If your surgery affected your lower lumbar area or your sacral area, your surgeon may prefer you not to use this technique. If you have limited leg mobility, weakness, or pain, and are not able to do the leg to lap method, or if you feel like it pulls too much on your surgery site, there are some gadgets that you can use to help you. This group of gadgets is called a hip kit because it's usually used with hip patients, but spine patients use them too. A traditional hip kit has a grabber, a socket, a shoehorn, a dressing stick, and a long-handled sponge. Hip kits are available for purchase at many online sources, pharmacies, or medical supply stores, typically for $30 to $40. To use the hip kit to take off your shoes, you would take the reacher, the post on the end, right behind your heel to push off your shoe To put on a sock, you would use the sock aid. You can stabilize it with your legs. The heel of the sock is going to go on the closed part. You'll pull it down, keeping it straight and untwisted. However it is on the sock aid is how it's gonna end up on your foot. Then you will drop it down with the ropes, slide your foot in, getting your toes all the way to the end, and it will thread the sock on your foot. Like so. To remove your sock, you can use that post on the back of the reacher again, right behind your heel, to push it off. To put on shorts, pants, or underwear, you can grasp the waistband with the reacher and drop it down so you can thread your feet through. You want to remember at this stage to pull the pants or shorts up as far as you can so that when you stand up to finish, you don't have to reach below your knees and bend too far to get it. To put your shoes on, you can use the grabber and the shoehorn together to hold the shoe, bringing that shoehorn right behind the heel, not on the side, but right behind your heel to slip on your shoe. I think it's easiest to have the shoehorn in the hand that's on the outside.